Well, it's a nice rainy day here in Arcata. Because, uh, just clean the bus. About to relax. I don't pull out till later this evening. So, today, I wanted to talk about um, qualifications. Uh, again, these are my opinions. Anything I do say is not indicative of the uh, official company policy, but these are things that I've observed working for Greyhound. These are things I've observed dealing with uh, specific, specific hiring managers. It may not be universal, but this is what I got from it. So decided to make this video because I had a friend of mine who was interested in working for Greyhound and uh, he works for a company you know delivering dirt and all that stuff and uh you know they don't he's not making he's not getting enough hours he's not making good pay so he was interested in uh going greyhound you know we get regular pay we get good benefits you know all that good stuff but he was concerned because he had only been driving big vehicles for less than a year um now on the the official greyhound site it doesn't really stipulate a um when you first start signing up it doesn't really stipulate that you have to have any specific experience in driving a large vehicle and uh but if i remember correctly you get to a point to where it asks you uh do you have any experience in driving commercial vehicles so as far as the requirements go that i'm aware of for applying and being considered for uh, a job with Greyhound you have to be I believe at least 25 years of age for insurance purposes um, you have to uh, have your driving your driver's license can't be suspended within the past three years you can't um, have any DUIs now I think officially it said you can't have any DUIs within 10 years, but the last hiring manager I talked to, he had told me that he had seen people who had DUIs that were 15 years old and they were still uh, denied employment by, you know, human resources and backgrounds and all that good stuff. Uh, you can't have any uh, felonies, you know, you got to have a relatively clean background. Um, you can't have any, I think it's no more than two or three moving violations in the past three years. Uh, you can't have any at-fault accidents in the past five years. Um, and if I remember correctly, you had to have, I think it showed, it was either one or three years of experience driving a commercial vehicle. Now, this is where a lot of people get tripped up. So when I applied, I actually had little to no experience in driving a large commercial vehicle, but I had experience in driving commercial vehicles that did not include large vehicles, and they accepted that, which is just fine, you know. So for my, when I applied, you know, my background in driving was actually, I worked for AutoZone, and I worked as a commercial delivery driver. So I drove a commercial vehicle. I drove uh, vans, truck, small trucks, you know, pickups. The biggest thing I drove was like, you know, the size of a U-Haul. But on average, I drove a delivery van and a small truck to deliver parts to hub, between hubs, stores, and uh, to repair shops. And then, so I did that for about a year. And then I worked uh, for ADT as a uh, patrolman, and I drove an SUV. And I noted that because, uh, you know, I'm still driving a commercial vehicle, you know, and 90% of my day is driving around. And I was able to uh, work there for a little over a year or so and had no accidents. Uh, and then my last thing was I also added that, you know, I did Postmates, I did DoorDash, you know. So you don't necessarily have to have... Uh, tons of experience in driving a large vehicle. You can, you know, note that you've been doing DoorDash or Uber or, you know, things of that nature. The main thing is you're working in a commercial capacity. You're driving for hire. You're maintaining safe driving practices. You're maintaining a, uh, you know, insurance or whatever. You're, you're working for a company in a driving capacity, you know, uh, because mainly they will train you to drive. And I've seen 
people who had experience in driving commercial vehicles not make it through the training you know we in my class alone we had two or three individuals who were previous you know school and city bus drivers and they weren't able to pass you know typically i'd say one of the I'd say the two biggest reasons people don't pass the Greyhound uh, training that I've noticed has been um, inability to successfully complete uh, the pre-trip. You know, I know a lot. We've had several people who, uh, you know, they worked for a company and they didn't have to do pre-trips like uh, you do at Greyhound. You have to do a pre-trip every time you take that bus out so if you can't demonstrate a proper pre-trip which includes not only just uh doing basic safety inspections but also includes uh knowing about the bus knowing you know about the different aspects of the brake system knowing about the different drivetrain systems you know knowing about the engine components you know when they say where is the ac compressor you need to be able to point out the ac compressor and some people are just not good with that and then the other deal is obviously um, one of the easiest way to get kicked out of training is hitting a fixed object. And, you know, as soon as you hit a fixed object during your training, you're done. Forget it. You know, if you hit a fixed object during your 90 days, you can easily be terminated. You know, so, you know, when, when you're doing fixed, op if you hit a fixed object, a lot of that comes down to really just not paying attention to your mirrors, not um, observing your environment well enough. Um, and one of the most important aspects of driving for Greyhound is understanding the go, no go procedures. So basically if you have to be able to recognize that you're getting yourself into a, uh, a dangerous situation, you know, you're getting yourself into a situation in where you may hit something and if you're not observant enough, you know, you, you have to demonstrate that you can look at a situation and be like, Hey, it's going to be too tight. You know, I'm not going to turn down this alley because it, it, these are the biggest buses you're going to be able to drive. You know, it's bigger than the city bus. It's bigger than the school bus. You know, it's as big as most semis. So a lot of people don't realize how big this vehicle is. They think, you know, their years of working for, you know, a city or school bus is going to be enough to train them. And it's not, you know, your, your reference points are different. The bus handles differently. So uh, you want to understand that they will train you. Getting back to my point, uh, they'll train you so you don't have to worry so much about, you know, specific experience. They are concerned about having a good driving record, having good work ethics, meaning you're not hopping from job to job every year. You know, you're not, um, you have good customer service skills, obviously, and everything else, they will train you. You know, you're going to do training. You're going to drive for hours and hours. You're going to get it down. I went from having no experience driving a vehicle of this size to, you know, driving you know for months and months on end without incident so you know if you have driving experience you've worked in commercial you know even if it's something like hey you know i worked i drove uber i delivered parts you know mostly driving pickup trucks or vans note that that is driving experience so don't be discouraged if you think you don't have the experience to uh to drive you know they will train you they're concerned about your safety history if you have a history of accidents yeah they're not going to accept you if you have a history of you know a large amount of uh, moving violations it's going to be an issue you know um along with that if you're someone who's like me who had minor uh infractions you know i had fix it tickets you know i had um what was it i had fix it tickets i had you know just ticket i had old, several old tickets for you know expired registration expired insurance things of that nature it also looks bad it looks bad so what you want to do and i always recommend this if you're going to apply for any company and they're going to be looking at your driving record you know before you can even be given a uh move on to the next process during your initial interview you have to bring your age six so give yourself some time you know give yourself a month or so uh, go down to the DMV, have your drive, your, your, your H6 or your complete driving record printed out. It's typically, I think, like five bucks at most DMVs. It's in California, it's only like five bucks. And review it, you know. Uh, if it seems like it may be, you know, there might have be some problems or it may show a history of uh, issues, you can always request to have that record expunged. So it's maybe different in your state, but in California, 
you can call what's called the mandatory actions unit. And the mandatory actions unit, they will review your DMV record. And if you have old tickets or inconsequential tickets, they will actually have that. You can actually request to have that stuff expunged from your record. You know, I had like, you know, old tickets from back in 2005, 2004 showing up on my H6. I put in a request to have my uh, record expunged and all of that was gone, you know. So it makes you look like a more valuable employee and that's what you want, you know. So review your driving record because you're, do you're applying for a driving job. So make sure your, your driving record is as clean as you can make it. If you have some problems on there that uh, are old, you know, you're outside of that three year, they can still hire you if it's outside of that three year period, depending on the nature of the uh, offense. But if you can have it expunged, get it expunged. If you had a suspended license for any reason, um, they will accept the suspended license within the past, I think, like three to five years if it is not uh, moving violation related. For example, in California and I'm sure in other states, you can have your license suspended if you fail to appear or fail to pay a fine. So they will they will accept your your suspension if it's for those reasons. But again, just to make sure uh, if you had, let's say, a suspension and it was several years ago, you can always appeal to the court or apply to the court to have your suspension expunged. And if it goes, if they accept it, once that ex suspension is expunged from the court, you can go back to the DMV and have them expunge it from your driving record. You know, I had a suspension back in 2011 for failing to appear for a fix it ticket. Yeah, I got a ticket for freaking unnecessary noise and modified muffler, failed to appear, and I had a, and they suspended my license. It was a $25 ticket, and they suspended my license because of it. You know, I had no idea because back in Connecticut, they don't suspend your license for fix it tickets. So it wasn't until, you know, I had, uh, a damn near a year or two later because they still allow you to re-register your car they still allow you to do all that stuff that i gotten pulled over and a cop was like hey your shit was suspended you know it's for a minor fee so you know they weren't going to tow my car or anything and i had to go back to court have the case reopened and it got dismissed i didn't even have to pay you know any fee but yet it still showed that i had that suspension because of a failure to pay or a fail and a failure to p uh, appear for a fucking fix a ticket so get your H6, review your H6. If you can, request to have all your old, any old infractions expunged. Make sure you put any sort of driving experience that you have, including Postmates, uh, DoorDash, um, Uber, Lyft, put all that stuff on your record. If you, you think you don't, you think you don't have the experience, you be, you might be surprised, you know, uh, be cordial. Show that you have a customer customer service attitude because they definitely look at that. Um, and make sure you don't have too many accidents and definitely no DUIs. If you have any DUIs, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to have a hard time getting a job with Greyhound or any major transportation company. So keep that in mind and, uh, you know, apply. You know, the worst they can say is, hey, you know, you don't meet the requirements. But if you have, you know, at least a year of driving commercially or driving for pay, it should be considered acceptable, all right? So yeah, you know, you guys uh, keep sending questions, you know, keep uh, leaving comments. I love your guys' comments, you know, and I love getting the opportunity to to talk to you guys, you know. Um, I'm still doing my run, and I'll keep you guys updated. So talk with Phil. Talk to you guys later.